Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to Church of the Holy Apostles in Virginia Beach. I'm Phil Russo, and today is Sunday, August 21st, 2022. We were established 44 years ago to be a symbol of ecumenism, honoring both the Roman Catholic and Episcopal traditions. We have one worship service with two liturgies. Our worship is designed for you to experience both traditions. As a sign of our commitment to Christian unity, we ask that you remain for both liturgies. Today, Monsignor Raphael Pepra will celebrate Mass, assisted by Deacon Gary Harmeyer. Father Mario Melendez will celebrate Episcopal Holy Eucharist. This service is being live streamed. We welcome everyone here and those watching at home. For those here, please silence your cell phones. Together we say a very good morning to our brothers and sisters and friends who are joining us from your homes. Good morning to you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We now prepare ourselves for the celebration of the Eucharist by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory of God the Father, glory to God. 
God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Amen. Let us pray. Lord our God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite the children forward and their adult leaders for their liturgy of the word. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. I will set a sign among them. From them I will send fugitives to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and Lud, Mosach, Tubal, and Javan, to the distant coastlands, that have never heard of my fame or seen my glory, and they shall proclaim my glory among the nations. They shall bring all your brothers and sisters from all the nations as an offering to the Lord on horses and in chariots, in carts upon mules and dromedaries. To Jerusalem, my holy mountain, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring their offering to the house of the Lord and clean vessels. Some of these I will take as priests and Levites, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the uh, discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. Yet later it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet. That what is lame may not be disjoined, but healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? Jesus answered them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter but will not be strong enough to. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then you will stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. And he will say in reply, I do not know where you're from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught us on our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you're from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth and when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourself will be cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that's kind of a tough passage. Um, earlier in the week, we had a vestry council meeting, and uh, at the beginning of the vestry council meetings, and we have a, a spiritual reflection. And uh, Father Mario decided to use this particular gospel for the discussion point. And um, so we kind of went around, and we were talking about, all right, who's the people who are kind of left out and everything else? And you know, kind of the general feel was uh, it was probably the rich people. And uh, certainly, if you remember the gospel reading, where you know it would be easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to get to heaven. So, from that particular standpoint, yeah, I can see where the people came up with that. But then there was kind of a person who was an outlier and said, "Well, what if it's not talking about a socioeconomic uh, situation at all?" And so. You know, that's kind of where I feel as I continue to reflect on this more and more. I think the people who are not entering the narrow door are those people who feel that they're entitled to enter through the, uh, the narrow door. And it's in this entitlement that they just don't try and they don't go deeper into their relationship with Jesus. Because a number of those people who Jesus says, will get through those doors, the first will be last, the last will be first. Those are people who will never meet Jesus personally at all. And yet they are being welcomed in through the narrow door. Uh, I ran across a story this past week and I think that it kind of helps to uh, make this point. Uh, there was this bishop, um, a Methodist bishop in Angola, and if you're geographically challenged about what uh, African nations and where they're at, as I am, then Angola is uh, on the Atlantic coast, almost at the very bottom of the continent of Africa. Well, in 1975, then, uh, they were given their independence from Portugal. For the next 17 years, there was a civil war there, and the winner finally was a Marxist government, and the official religion of the country was atheism. And so um, uh, this was in the mid-90s, this Methodist bishop by the name of William Willimont was invited to Evanston, Illinois to talk to a group of young Christians. And so the young Christians uh, who had some idea of what was going on in Angola says, is the government supportive of your Christian activities? And the bishop said, no, uh, it's not, but then we don't expect the government to be supportive of our activities. And the next question they asked was, well, is there tension between the Christian church and the government in Angola? And he says, yes. In fact, recently there was a decree that was handed down that said that some of our organizations could no longer meet. 
And the follow-up question to that by the crowd was, well, what did you do? And he said, well, we continue to meet. And then the, follow the last question they asked is, uh, again, a follow-up question. Well, what happens if the government gets strong enough that they can enforce a decree? And the bishop said, we will go to jail. He said, jail is a great place to evangelize. He said, during the 17 years of civil war, that many people were added to the church because when you were all in jail together, you had the opportunity, the time to preach and to teach people about Jesus. And so many converts came into the church as a result of that. He said, I think it's easier to be a, a pastor in Angola than it would be to be a pastor in Evanston, Illinois. He said, here you have so much, you have so many distractions, you have no threats. And so as a result of that, why take your religion seriously at all? Whereas in Angola, there was a huge threat to the people's survival uh, individually and as a group of Christians. And so as a result of that, the Christianity, he said, don't worry about Christianity in Angola, we're doing fine. And after I read that, I thought, you know, the last time I can remember that we had really what would be referred as an existential threat was probably 9-11. We didn't know how big of a, a terrorist uh, group was involved in that and everything else. And what happened to our churches? They were full because all of a sudden the people understood that there were things outside of their control. And so the way to answer that was to come in and ask for guidance, ask for reassurance, ask for comfort from their God. But when you have so many distractions, so many options, and so calm, no threats, then a lot of people, and we see it today, they just drift away. Because as the uh, second reading from Paul's letter to the uh, Romans said, you know, what is expected, what is needed of uh, Christians is a certain discipline. And most of us understand that in our, in our physical life, right? We understand that if we eat right, we try to get our rest, we exercise and everything else, then that's going to be better for us and it's gonna make our lives better. But how many people take seriously about what do I need to do for my spiritual life? How do I somehow make, how do I have a discipline that then makes that move forward in a very positive way? You know, uh, last week after Mass, and um, Monsignor and I talked briefly in the office, and he really gave this community uh, a compliment. And what he said is, um, you know, it impresses me how many people here are so engaged in what's going on here. And I said, well, you know, Father, the difference between this place, the ecumenical communi community, not a parish, the difference between this place is that you can't take this for granted, and they all know that. You know, that his experience, I'm sure at St. Luke's, my experience at Ascension, is how many people come in and we would classify them as anonymous Catholics. You know, they understand that, well, I don't want to commit a mortal sin, so what I'll do is I'll come in right after Mass starts, I'll leave before Mass is over, that way I don't have to make any commitment to the community or anything else, and you never see them to uh, volunteering or getting engaged or anything else. Well, because they could have, they could get a homily or something on, we need money to, we need to raise money for something. Somebody else will do that. Well, we need people to volunteer here or there. Well, somebody else will do that. And if nobody does it, then you know the, the diocese will somehow bail us out. Well, here, it's not that way. If we don't make it work, neither diocese is gonna bail us out. We are in a 45 year experiment. We need to be engaged and that's why we are as active as we are together, which is, like I said, I felt a big compliment. But when you look around us for the population in the United States and Western Europe as well, you know, you just don't see that. What you see are people, more and more people, who are classifying themselves as nuns. And yet there will be, at some point, I believe, an accounting of some type for how we used our time, our talent, and our treasures here on earth. Amen. Amen.
we now profess our faith together. I, I believe, believe in God, God the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Indeed, the Lord prepares the banquet for all will not turn away from our petitions. That we support Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, Presiding Bishop Michael, Bishops Barry and Susan, Monsignor Raphael, Father Mario, and Deacon Gary. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our hear our prayer. That our community not lose heart under the Lord's discipline, but learn humility and patience through it. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Holy Scripture and the sacraments nourish and strengthen all believers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That home, hearth, and hope for the future be restored to exiles and refugees. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That students and teachers starting a new school year make Christ and his truth the center of their studies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That there be peace in Ukraine and everywhere there is war and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Honoring our Larkham Covenant, we pray for our brothers and sisters of Lutheran, Episcopal, Roman Catholic, and United Methodist churches. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God answers the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of Abraham, you know our works and our thoughts. Gather our prayers and shower down your blessings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away our iniquities, cleanse us from all our sins. Pray now, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Mark. 
for the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh. Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your son whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept it also through, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, 
graciously to endow us with his very spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and bury our bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her blessed spouse in Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And now, my dear friends, at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your world, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit, let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace, and we ask if you're watching us live stream, please put a note in the chat box. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, it is with faith in your love and mercy that we take your body. We thank you for giving your soul to us this morning. Let this gift not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and body. And now, my dear friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us everlasting life. Amen. An act of spiritual communion for those watching us from home. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord our God, complete within us the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for your presence, which is a gift, and it is a good gift. If you are online, thank you for your online presence. For those of you who haven't been here for a while, it's good to have you back. And, uh, and if, you, if you can make it back next Sunday, that'll be great. All right? So, thank you for being here. En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thought of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
esté con ustedes. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oremos. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit may show forth your power among all peoples. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Lucas, to Luke. Glory to you. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She, has, she was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cure on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, do not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And out not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. El Evangelio del Señor, the Gospel of the Lord. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. This I ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit of God. Amen. I know that many of you, many of us, uh, love books. If that is you, I have a question. Do you have a habit of buying books or picking up books that you never quite get around to reading? Well, let's just be honest. Yeah, just, yeah, I'm ripping my own hand, too. Now, if this sounds like you, you might be engaging in something without knowing. There's something called sundoku, which is a Japanese term to describe a person who owns a lot of unread books. According to an expert, the word doku can be used uh, as a verb to mean reading. And then there's a word uh, sumu, which is a word meaning to pile up. So when put together, Sundoku has the meaning of buying reading material and piling it up. Put up into that, we'll get back to that later. So yesterday the, the, the church celebrated the Feast of San Bernard of Clairvaux, advisor of popes, of, advisor of princes and kings, defender of the faith, healer of schism, reformer of a monastic order, script, scripture scholar, theologian, so many things. Uh, think of him, uh, kind of like a combination of a monk and a, and a rock star, because he used to travel around, the, around Europe with, with an entourage, except for those times in which he was supposed to be at the monastery. So he was all these things, and he was a great preacher. He became associated with bees for being, quote, the honey-sweet doctor for his honey-sweet language, because he would draw people in with his, with his homilies. He had that effect of people. Uh, Bernard was born in a, in a castle, a highborn family in southwestern France, gets sent away uh, by his parents to, to get a classical education. Uh, after his mother, his mother died, he was in a big depression. He pondered what I'm supposed to do with my life, what does God want me to do? So at age 20, he decides to become a monk. And as part of the process, uh, he, had, he had to give a testimony, 
had to give a testimony uh, and to, uh, to join the monastery. And he said that his testimony was so compelling, so moving, that five brothers, two uncles, and some 30 young friends followed Bernard into the monastery. That's how he became associated with bees, all that sweet talk, right? In fact, St. Bernard is the patron saint of beekeepers. St. Bernard, Bernard once said, Jesus to me is honey in the mouth, light in the eyes, a flame in our heart. Now within four years, that monastery he joined, which was a dying community, had recovered enough to, they actually had to build a new house, another, another monastery, with Bernard as abbot. So in only a few years, he went from joining the monastery to becoming an abbot, to becoming the leader of the monastery. Yeah, he went up, he went up, right? And the valley was soon renamed Clarvaux, the Valley of Light, the Valley of Light. So now you know, the next time you hear Saint Bernard Clarvaux, it means Saint Bernard of the Valley of Light. The Valley of Light. He, he was all, people were always seeking him to be a counselor, to be an arbitrator, and he developed a reputation for telling the truth, even to the most powerful men of France and the rest of Europe. And Bernard would make a lot of people mad, in particular powerful people like kings and nobles, but also bishops and cardinals. In fact, if you see this handout here, you will see the icon of Saint Bernard on the top, and below you will see, a, you will see his seal, and then you have a little explanation. He basically wrote to the Pope and told him, hey, people have been forging my letters, they've been using my seal, they've been saying horrible things about me, please don't believe them. This is my new seal, so make sure that, please, when you read something, that, it, that is the right seal. That's how bad it got. It got. See, these days, to, to slander you or whatever, you know, people will steal your email address, or they will make a fake video. In those days, they will just steal, <laughs> steal your seal for your mail, right? So, yeah, made people mad, including, you know, everybody, kings and cardinals. And one day, he apparently stepped on some sensitive toes uh, in Rome due to his work connected to a church council. He was denounced as a monk who, quote, meddled with matters that did not concern him, end quote. A certain cardinal called Harmerich, on behalf of the Pope, wrote to Bernard a very sharp letter of rebuke, quote, it is not fitting that noisy and troublesome frogs should come out of their marshes to trouble the Holy See and the cardinals, end quote. A very poetic way of saying, know your place, stop, stop getting involved in stuff that doesn't concern you, right? What do you think Bernard do? Well, it was those days, people write you a letter, you let it in reply, right? There was no Twitter back then. So he, he writes a letter and says, look, um, he assisted at that council because he was, be, he was actually dragged to it by force. And that happened many times. Bernard really wanted to stay in his monastery and just be a monk. That's really what all he wanted. But that, was, that, was, that wasn't the case. People kept saying, please help us with this, or we're going to take you. You're going to help us. You're going to help us with this. So he writes a letter back. Now, Quote, now, illustrious Harmeric, if you so wish, who would have been more capable of freeing me from the necessity of assisting at the council than yourself? In other words, you had a problem, you could have done something about it. And uh, forbid those noisy, troublesome frogs to come out of their holes to leave their marshes. Then your friend will no longer be exposed to the accusations of pride and presumption. In other words, drop mic. That's it. St. Bernard had a sense of humor. He was known for having a big temper. He could, he, he could fly out the handle sometimes. This is, a, this is the thing, as Anglicans and Roman Catholics, it is important not only to study the church father, but also know the saints. Because the saints, like us, human beings. So even though, yes, they do miracles, they do stuff, but they're still human. And Supposedly, by being human, is you try to laugh sometimes, right? So he had a sense of humor. Well, one day, uh, they were opening a new abbey, and the monks found a swarm of flies, pexy flies, that were all around the church. This is a church that was ab about to be dedicated, right? Now, Bernard watched his monks uh, swatting, shooing, you know, getting the, try to get the, the, the flies to go, you know, to, to leave. Picture in your mind a bunch of monks saying, shoo, shoo, fly, shoo, shoo, right? Don't bother me. 
And finally, Bernard fixed his eyes on the flies and loudly declared, I hereby excommunicate all of you. The monks laughed because, really. And apparently, uh, they, they later found hundreds of dead flies all over the floor the next morning. <laughs> now, here's the thing. St. Bernard was focused on God instead of the flies, which made him free to ease the anxiety of his brothers. By what? By making a joke, right? Sometimes, we get upset over things that would be easier to handle if what? If we looked for the humor in them. If we look for the humor in them. In 1145, one of his pupils becomes Pope, Eugene III. Bernard was his, was his spiritual father, and, and uh, in, in dedication to him, he wrote a book called Five Books of Consideration with advice into how to be a good Pope, right? And he wrote in this book the following for him. That to be a good Pope is, is to ultimately be involved, have express vision of the mystery of the church and of the mystery of Christ, which is ultimately resolved in the contemplation of the, of, the, of the Trinity of the God. Quote, the search for this God, and this actually applies to us too, the search for this God, that's right, Thomas, give me a second. The search for this God, who is not yet sufficiently sought, must be continued. Yet it may be easier to search for him and find him in prayer rather than in discussion. So let us end the book here, but not the search. I actually wrote that. <laughs> St. Bernard also gave the following advice, which I think also applies to us. Yes, a 12th century monk has advice for us. Because he, he, he tells this to the Pope, but he can tell this to anyone, any one of us. I praise your humanity, but only in condition that it be complete. But how can it be complete if you yourself are left out? You too are a man. So then, in order that your humanity may be entire and complete, let your bosom, which receives all, find room for yourself also. That is, to provide time for meditation and solitude is a pastoral duty towards oneself. Failure in this mars one whole ministry. In short, if a man is bad to himself, to whom is he good? So remember, I do not say always, I do not say often, but at least sometimes to restore yourself to yourself. That applies to us here in the 21st century. That's what, I, that's what I try to remind myself, and I fail sometimes, that what good am I if I don't take care of myself? In fact, many of you are parents or grandparents or are working. You wouldn't be any good if you, if, if you don't take care of yourself. You would be able to do all those things, right? take care of your children, to take care of your responsibilities, right? And this 12th century monk was saying, was saying that to a pope, right? To take care of yourself. Remember at the beginning of the homily when I talk about the problem of buying books and not reading them? Well, Bernard also loved books, loved books. Love reading, love learning. And I conclude this homily with these words about that. Believe me, for I know you will find something for greater in the woods than in the books. Stone and trees will teach you that which you cannot learn from the masters. Have a great week, my sisters, my brothers, my siblings in Christ, and see you in the woods. Amen. Please rise. Thank you, Thomas, for your, your approval of my homily. <laughs> How about you help us out now with the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the faithful, prayers of the people. After each petition, please respond, hear our prayer. Pray for the church for an end to divisions among Christians, that God inspire us to continue our quest for Christian unity. Pray that all may be one. Hear our prayer. Pray for peace, for goodwill among nations, and that all people be treated with dignity and respect. Hear our prayer. Pray for our bishops, our clergy, our staff, and our lay ministers. Hear our prayer. Pray for our bishops. Oops. Pray for the poor, the sick, the hungry, and the suffering. Hear our prayer. Pray for those who have died. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Pray for safe travels for my wife and her father this week. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. I'd like to pray for the Carlson family, who today have a lot of fear and, heart and hate in their hearts. Let's try to turn that right around. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Uh, we have done what we have left of none. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive your sins for the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen your goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. La paz del Señor. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer you the sign of peace. If you are online, type some words of peace. La paz del Señor. La paz del Señor. La paz del Señor. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering sacrificed to God. Please be seated.
El Señor esté con ustedes. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesucristo, Jesus Christ, your only eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he gave you thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. Este es mi cuerpo. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. Esta es mi sangre. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you this gift, sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with San Bernardo Clarbo and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesucristo, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Mi Señor, mi Dios, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Los dones de Dios, the gifts of God for you, the people of God. El cuerpo de Cristo, el pan del cielo. The prayer of spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you were truly present in the blessed sacrament of our altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus Christ, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you, in you in me, and in this life, and in the life to come. Amen.
Oremos, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Happy birthday this week to Terry Keenan, Lynn Graham, Margaret Anderson, and Amy Roden. <laughs> Happy anniversary this week to Brett and Whit um, Whitney McDaniel. <laughs> the altar flowers this week are dedicated to the members of Holy Apostles. Please take a flower from today's arrangement home with you. The fellowship committee needs an Episcopal co-chair. This is a fun and important ministry at Holy Apostles. Please pray about how you can share your gifts and talents. Contact Gail Orland, Mike Churwa, or Bonnie Start for more information. The Vestry Council needs two Roman Catholic members and one Episcopalian member starting in September. Please fill out the form at the greeters table if you have interest in serving on the council or wish to nominate somebody, please ask them before you nominate them. Um, that almost happened to me one time. Um, our, our fifth annual fall fling will be Sunday, September 18th from 3 to 6 p.m. Donations from this event will be used to repurpose the playground and refurbish the AMBO wall. We will enjoy good eats and libation, music by our own Mike Meehan and a special guest artist, Greg Haynes and Mark Wheeler, and a silent auction. Uh, we do need 24 square folding tables. I guess they're the four by fours. Is that what you're looking for, Jackie? The four by fours? Card table size, okay. Um, plus, we will need four, um, 24, 24 folding tables plus sandwiches, hearty snacks, and finger foods. Holy Apostles will provide soft drinks, beer, wine, and mixers for BYOB. Sign up sheets are on the easel to reserve a table and bring food and help with the kitchen prep and cleanup. The silent auction committee will need new or gently used items to sell. Please bring your donations between August 28th and September 11th and place them in the Young Apostles room to be sorted and tagged. Watch your email for more details and thank you for supporting the, this fundraising effort. The next scheduled gathering for our meal at Maja Key is Sunday, August 28th at 1 p.m. Please sign up on the easel in the hallway so that we can have um, a correct number to make a reservation. Also, there are updated copies of the church directory available on the greeters table. And please inform the office with any changes in your contact inf information. You don't have to ball yes, you know. <laughs> I mean, we thank you for doing that. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, just a few things. The next Theology on Tap, which of course is always the first Tuesday of the month. Do we have a location? Whitney, uh, do we have a location? Um, Pleasure House Brewery. Pleasure House Brewery, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if you don't know where to find that, you... you you know, you can either use the, the internet machines or you can ask somebody, okay? But yes, uh, it's gonna be about miracles. So if you ever had questions about miracles, and I, I share this with a, with, a, with a few of my folks here, this will be a two-parter, because uh, I'm finding out that there's so much to cover in some of these themes that then, then the hour's gone, and that's it, right? So uh, we will talk, uh, we'll just split it into, into two, okay? So 
if you ever wanted to, to talk about miracles, so discuss miracles or anything like that, I welcome you to come. Also, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm, I would like to start a rosary group here at the Holy Apostles. I already have a couple of people that are interested. If you are interested, let me know. Uh, either, uh, you know, let uh, Kalina go, you know, call her, send an email or anything. Or just let me know as well so that, so that we can take your information, okay? Because depending on who is interested, we can set up the time. It will be more convenient for everyone, okay? And, uh, and by the way, you don't have to be a Roman Catholic to, to do the rosary, right? I mean, I mean, I mean, your, you know, your hands will not burn if you touch the rosary, okay? Just, 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 uh, I, and, and that too, there is also an Anglican rosary as well, but, 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 but it's not like, and a Catholic hands are not going to burn if you touch the Anglican rosary either, right? So, so, uh, so hopefully, hopefully you can, you can join us. Please, please let me know. Thomas, did I forget anything else? Well, I And we thank you for your prayers and, and your applause. And Thomas is wondering, they're applauding. I don't know for I don't know why, but yeah, uh, but yeah. So thank you, thank you for your prayers. A any a anything else? All right, Thomas. Can we can we can we end this? I guess yes. Well, let's rise. Oh, and by the way, I will be here next Sunday. There was, there was a bit of a scheduled uh, na snafu, but so no, don't worry, I will be here next Sunday, so don't worry. Everything will be fine. <laughs> La paz de Dios, the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesucristo, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Padre, Hijo y Espíritu Santo, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you, Remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.